you know, if there's some sort of way to track my thoughts, what percentage of my thoughts are mindful in the moment, present thoughts versus worrying about the future or regretting the past somehow from dumb decisions I've made. I, I, I don't, I think that the present thoughts and mindful thoughts would be a very, very, very small percentage. And I'm wondering how that's affecting and impacting how I live, my decision-making process, my thinking. How does it affect and impact my relationships with family, with friends, with colleagues? Now, Welcome to the EQ Gangster Podcast, where you will learn practical tools to grow your mental and emotional health and intelligence to be the best version of yourself, both at work and at home. It is real, raw, and transformational. The journey of emotional growth isn't easy, but it's worth it. I believe in you. EQ Gangsters, coming back from my 06 BJJ therapy class and doing some reflecting. I was doing some reflecting yesterday too. The the episode for today is going to be be where you are. Be where you are. Man, I, and, and I've realized that in a lot of my thoughts, my unintentional thoughts, it is thinking about maybe even worried about who I am not and where I would rather be in my life rather than where I am right now in my life. And I thought, man, I don't know that that's a, that's a good thing because I'm not being where I am. Right? I'm, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm very present because I'm always like, crap, I'm behind in life. I should be further along in life. You know, I'm, and I think I talked about this recently too, like I'm not doing good here. I'm not doing good here. I can do better here. I can do better there. I can do better there. Rather than, you know, jujitsu, man, is another example. We just, I, I, I got to see my, my professor, you know, at my, the gym that I'm at now, his name is Chad Black Belt and a smaller dude. So I'm 6'1", 250. He's, he's probably 5'7", five, 5'8", five, and probably 175, 180. And, he, you know, he, he rolling with him, he, he, he literally just plays with me like it's not even a, he doesn't break a sweat rolling with me. And I got to watch him in another purple belt who probably could be even a brown belt by now. And as big as me, but, but more, way more muscles than me. <laughs> and he, those two rolling, it's like watching Picasso paint, man. There, It's like, it's like I'm doing karate or Kenpo Ken's hot yoga class or something. <laughs> And when I watch those two roll, they they just have such a deeper understanding of jujitsu than I do. And and man, it's it's overwhelming. You know, it is overwhelming when you see two. You know, I would argue, you know, folks that have mastered or are getting close to mastering a you know, craft, in this case, jujitsu. And man, you know, and the other one is like, okay, well, how do I apply those principles to life? And what what areas of my life am I a white belt? What areas of my life am I a a blue belt? Am I a purple belt, brown belt? And, you know, it feels like I'm a white belt in most areas of my life just being, you know, transparent. That's how I feel. Now people, it, with people, I feel like I'm further along, you know, maybe, maybe a purple belt, maybe a brown belt, 
when it comes to people, I've been studying people for three decades and coaching leaders and reading hundreds of books, interviewing and talking to hundreds of, of different leaders. So I'd like to think I'm a, maybe a purple belt or a brown belt in the area of people. The more I get to know about God, I definitely feel like a white belt. Like, man, I'm, you know, so, so with, with all of that, how can I, you know, ape, go ape, acknowledge, permission to feel, express, and discuss. How can I acknowledge the feelings of, of feeling behind and feeling like I'm not good enough and I'm not enough and I don't have what it takes and I'm always going to be playing high school ball my whole life and, and acknowledge those, those emotions and feelings process, not stew and brood, but process those emotions and feelings and then do, you know, permission to feel right. And then express I need to do more journaling. That was another takeaway from one of my coaching sessions that I had with a client yesterday. He was convicted that he needs to do better, better, more intentional job at journaling. And, and, and I did too. I'm like, snap, you know, you're right. Dude, I, I need you as well. I do a little bit. I kind of have a version of journaling right now with my victory journal, my David journal, my God's provision journal, but I, it's not, it's not where I'm cataloging thoughts necessarily. So, and reflections and, and insights and, and that kind of thing. So, which I think would also help me with my goal of be where you are. There's a verse, I don't remember exactly where it's at in the Bible, it's in Psalm somewhere. Be still and know that I am God. Be still, which is also my tattoo for my all my YouTube folks. You know, I've got a bunch of tattoos and one on my right knuckles is abide, which is another way of saying, man, I never thought about that. It's another way of saying be where you are and then also I would like I, I'd also argue be who you are be where you are and be who you are and you know again that that, that may sound trite but I, I just I don't think I do a very good job at that you know and I, I it would be fascinating to, to do you know if there's some sort of way to track my thoughts, what percentage of my thoughts are mindful in the moment, present thoughts versus worrying about the future or regretting the past somehow from dumb decisions I've made. I, I, I don't, I think that the present thoughts and mindful thoughts would be a very, very, very small percentage. And I'm wondering how that's affecting and impacting how I live, my decision-making process, my thinking. How does it affect and impact my relationships with family, with friends, with colleagues? Now, obviously, I feel like when I'm coaching leaders, I feel very present. In fact, that's one of the most present times that I feel that I'll also argue like jujitsu doing jujitsu. I feel very, very present doing jujitsu, you know, because it's three dimensional chess, real time chess. And so, you know, so I've got to think about and really pray about, okay, God, help me to be where I am and to be who I am, who you've called me to be, rather than fretting or be concerned with who I'm not or who I have not been, man, I I, I just really realized, dang, how like I, I feel like those are definitely the majority of my thoughts, which is a 
which is a little concerning for me. How did I get there? What led me to the place where I have not been present or mindful or in the moment? And then also going forward, how can I, what's the fix? What's the solution? How can I start shifting back to being a much more present, mindful human being, leader, husband, father, friend, rather than constantly being in the past or the future. So, and I think that's funny. I just took a big breath. Breathing exercises, I think also help. I've been trying to get into a, doing 10 minutes a day of intentional breathing, intentional breath work. And that's helpful. The cold showers are helpful. Cold plunges are helpful. So those are all things that, you know, reading the Bible, praying, it's all helpful. I've just got to get more disciplined at, at those practices that lead to more mindfulness. I, I don't think it's helpful to not be present in the moment, to always either be in the future or the past. I just don't think that's super healthy. Not that you can't do some reflection on the future or the past. I just don't think it needs to be the majority of of my of my thinking. You know, you can't change the past. You have no idea. You can't predict the future. You can affect the future. You can influence the future by being more mindful and intentional on the present. So anyway, that's another one of my things I've got to work on, add that to the laundry list of stuff that I've got to work on. Be who you are and be where you are. Do you have any thoughts on, on like, where are you at? Do a, do a mindfulness or a in the moment audit. What percentage of time are you thinking future thoughts, past thoughts, present thoughts, if you had to boil that down, what percentage did you say you are in each of those areas? And what can you do? What are some exercises or things that you can do on a more frequent basis to become more present, more mindful, so that you can be who you are and be where you are? Thank you for letting me be a part of your journey and, and vice versa. This episode is sponsored by Classical Conversations. Since 1997, Classical Conversations has been equipping families like yours with the resources to homeschool with confidence following a classical curriculum rooted in a Christ-centered worldview alongside other families in a local community. Homeschooling is doable with Classical Conversations. Check out classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons for more information. Again, that's classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons, G-I-B-B-E-N-S.